Wow, such, important, such an important reminder to take care on the roads. Now, pop-up dining experiences are all the rage, but how do you make a pop-up restaurant incredibly unique at a time when the concept is so familiar? Well, Robertson's took up the challenge and they created an incredible pop-up restaurant where the chef, the menu, and even the decor changed every single day for five straight days in the Robertson's reinvention kitchen. Robertson's has traveled the world to find the finest herbs and spices and the Robertson's reinvention kitchen celebrated the cuisine and culture of vibrant locations. Robertson's as a spice people, we decided that we really wanted to give consumers an amazing experience where they got to understand all of the sourcing and blending expertise that goes behind our spice blends. And so we decided to create one amazing pop-up experience that takes five amazing spices that we source from all over the world. And so we've created five unique nights using five amazing millennial chefs to kind of take this amazing spice and explode it into a starter main and dessert and even a bit of Bridge. This concept is something really unique. Where for us it was really important that every single day the restaurant changes everything. I mean everything. The decor and chefs, the herbs, the spices, the menu every single day. Because it needed to highlight that individual spice and what it brings to our blends. As soon as I heard the concept and heard you know the craziness that these guys were you know planning on doing, I was in uh, straight away. Um, it's very much my character, it's very much my style, it's what I do in my own restaurants. I don't even give you a menu in some of my restaurants. You just sit down, you have a, a profiling from salt to sweet and every sensation in between and then you just get what's given to you sort of thing. So right up my alley, very much in line with my character and the way that I deliver food anyway. The reason I love working with chili and I like it so much and use it in every one of my dishes is because I'm addicted. It literally has a chemical property that does something sending my adrenaline into orbit and I just want more every time I taste it. Tonight's menu has been sashimi scallops, tandoori style. That's with a lime and cucumber gel, a burnt muli puree, smoky burnt chili, and roasted pine nuts. It was such a fantastic experience because the last time I came to Melrose Arch, there was just nothing. It was just the piazza. And then all of a sudden, from nowhere, this Robertson's lovely theater arrived. This beautiful area that's been decorated with beautiful colors. You met with this wonderful drink that's conjured up in front of you. And you go in and there are beautiful, robust reds and purples and chilies everywhere. And there was a sense of, you know, that your senses were going to be tantalized. And I felt really excited about it. Starters were something unexpected but in the most brilliant way. It was a journey because when you started off with the dish it was mild and then when you got to the end of the dish it came to life if I could say that. So I used to be with Classic FM and there's a high note in classical music and it's called the crescendo and it was the crescendo for this meal. The next course was a lamb tikka pies. We got lamb necks, we cooked them down in tikka paste with loads of yogurt and then we did that in a short crust pastry with loads of lime zest and loads of chili through it. We served that with compressed pear, which has been done in a pickling liquor. We've done it with a char grilled feta and then a lime kombucha tea and pear gel. I, I just love lamb because it's succulent, it takes up flavors which marry so well with lamb and the chili worked so well with it. That was finished by the dessert which is a chocolate and chili fondant. It's all about the flavor of the chili in that one. Because the chocolate is so rich and so dark, it literally takes on all that characteristic from that chili, like the one, a marriage made in heaven. That's served with a baked banana sorbet. That's with a lime sherbet and a lime honeycomb as well, just to make it really sweet. Finished with rose petals and a rose jelly. I enjoy a little bit of chili, not to overwhelm, but just to complement the dish. Like tonight's example of the dark chocolate fondant was absolutely superb. The chili just enhanced the chocolate flavors. It didn't overwhelm with a burning sensation. That was absolutely perfect. Wow, so on that spicy note, we've been so inspired by the unique use of herbs and spices that Clem has designed a tantalizing dish, heroing his favorite Robertson spice. Exactly, and just like Robertson travels the globe to bring back the freshest and most amazing spices and herbs, I'm gonna travel today to the Mediterranean using their spices. I love the Mediterranean. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, let me get my pan really hot. I'm gonna ask you if you can pass the second one, which is our chicken spice. Okay, this there one, we go. Yeah. So we get some oil in the pan first. So we're gonna kind of create a sauce 
using all the flavors of the spice that's gonna create with the chicken, all the other ingredients that we're working with today. It's gonna be really light and fresh and like perfect for summer. Let's go start. So, our chicken spice goes in and adds so much flavor and actually tenderizes the chicken at the same time. Okay. And again, we're working with chicken breast and you yeah. wanna use a spice or ingredients that will tenderize the chicken breast. Then I need yeah, you caveat. have to really flavor a chicken breast. You do, but it's so easy with Robertson spices. The flavors are just so like, I mean, just give that a, mm. so good. I mean, mm. actually quite some So many layers of flavor. It is. Yeah. So the pan's nice and smoky, and I want that. So I'm gonna get the chicken in now. Okay. And that's gonna start sizzling away. To that, I wanna go with some chili flakes. So I've got the chili flakes over there. Absolutely. And the as well. I love chili flakes. I love chili flakes as well. It's all about the chili today and all that heat. Okay, so chili going in. So how do they make these? Are they just dried garlic? And do you know if you actually soak them in warm water, they rehydrate again? Oh, That's exactly what's gonna they happen. They soften up. Exactly, yeah, yeah. it's gonna happen in our dish as well today. So I know you like the chili, I like the chili. I'm saying yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's enough. That was when. <laughs> chili going in. Okay. Oh, sorry, garlic. Garlic. Okay. And the second it hits the pan, you can smell it. You can. So you know the magic's happening. I love the smell of, chick of Robertson's chicken spice. It has such a, a nostalgic um, feeling for me. Like, it reminds me of home. Do you know what? Because my mom always cooked with Robertson's know, it's spices. So true. Yeah, it takes me right back home. I love it on popcorn, freshly popped popcorn. Really? Yes. It's so good. Chickeny popcorn. Just like that. Cool. That's looking good. That's smelling amazing. And because it's chicken fresh, it's not going to take that long to cook. So let's go into the rest of our ingredients okay. cherry tomatoes. I mean, you can't do a Mediterranean dish without tomatoes. Interesting. I'm interested in to know why you didn't fry the tomatoes first, because they don't, don't they take longer? I don't want them to break uh, down. I want to keep some of that texture in the tomato. Uh, okay. So I don't want to add them too soon. Okay. And we're going in with some green olives. You can go with black olives, absolutely. And I've kind of like, I've just torn them instead of like chopping them up. I like to think that's in rustic. It smells so lovely. It's got a nutty smell as it well. It does. Okay, that's in there. What else we got? I've got some brinjals. What brinjals. I've done is Did you I, roast it? I fried them in a little bit of oil, and then yeah. as soon as they came out, I used my barbecue spice. And I tossed okay. them into some barbecue spice just to give them some extra flavor. And okay. that's going in. And also, by frying them before the time, and you could roast it, you're right, by doing that, you kind of create more texture and more flavor. Yes. Ooh. That's looking good. And Everything is smelling so amazing, guys. I wish you could smell it. And the by only now way you can cooked. smell it is to make it yourself. We should totally like work on that. Get, get smell a vision. Okay. Looking good. So can you pass me the spinach and the basil, please? Spinach and basil, my favorite. The keyword for this recipe is spice. SMS that keyword to double three six five zero for the recipe and the full ingredients. Cool. Just pour the basil in there. You don't want to chop it up. Don't do no. that. No. It's going to soften anyway. It'll exactly. It'll really small. Ooh, try to keep everything in one pan, and as you keep on tossing it, that spinach is going to wilt toss down. Toss and toss and toss. There we go. Yeah. So I've got some pasta over there. Pasta. And I'm going to get my gold bowl, because I mean, a dish this good needs to be served in a golden in bowl. In a golden bowl. So I'm actually going to put my pasta in first. Okay. And you can kind of like, as you eat it, you can kind of like mix it yourself. I'm tempted to make this tonight. You should. It's so easy. I mean, who doesn't love a good pasta dish? It's really delicious and it's healthy. It is, because the flavors are so fresh and the ingredients you're working with are so fresh as yeah. well. Yeah, although I'm gonna break down my tomatoes a little bit Do more. it, go for it, make it your own. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the chicken is perfectly cooked now. So maybe then I need to just make the tomatoes separately if I wanna break them down. Do that, or roast yeah. it with some um, Robertson spice in it. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's an even better <laughs> idea. Get some more on top there. That looks absolutely delicious. And, and um, as soon as it cools off, I'm going to tuck in. I think it's a great idea for a Friday night, easy, quick dinner.
spices are more aromatic. It's subtle flavors that you can add to anything. The difference between a good spice and a bad spice is one gram of something. That's how you get a well-balanced meal, is when the flavors dance together. Experimenting is the most fun thing you can do with food. You would do two familiar flavors, and that's a good way to start. Every night, the experience is just completely different. Tonight was just absolutely amazing. It was fantastic.